I want to just really just go through a little bit more the agenda and the tools that we're going to be using for the meeting. I mean, Natalie already mentioned uh, quite a lot about what's going to be happening today. Uh, we're dividing the meeting really into three themes, the, the, the thematic flow that she talked about. And we're starting uh, with general talking about the logistics cluster, information sharing, triggering, triggering thoughts, updates on some projects. Um, and we've talked about the sort of themes that are likely to be the digitalization, localization, and capacity strengthening. And they will all come together in the panel discussion that will be coming up. Um, we'll have updates on operations, particularly long-term operations. If you think that more than half the logistics um, cluster operations have been running for more than five years, uh, it's a big issue about, and, and of course, this is about driving localization. So we're looking at the Central African Republic, South Sudan, Nigeria and Syria. Uh, that's in the session at the end of today and first thing tomorrow morning. We're having a bit of a brainstorming session later today. What you think the humanitarian landscape should be looking like in three to five years time? Um, it's a big question, but it'll be very interesting to hear your views because those sort of things can all, everything can filter into the discussions about the strategy that's coming up. The second pillar of the meeting is really very much the governance and strategy sessions um, where we be ha have heads of supply chain who will start to decide the focus for the next few years and set that compass. And then the marketplace sessions that Atalie mentioned Thursday and Friday, putting on show some of the initiatives of logistics partners. And we're going to have some teasers for those sessions tomorrow. So. Um, these are initiatives like Eduardo, the air transport planning. That's an acronym, incredibly long, and I can't remember what it stands for, but I know it's all about transport planning. And LOG IE and a, a number of, um, of those sort of initiatives that we will hear more about as, as sort of little tasters for what's happening in the, um, in the uh, sessions later at the marketplace sessions. Right, a few technical things I need to tell you. The link that you use to get onto the session today is valid throughout the day. So that's also for the guest session from uh, UNAID on the joint packaging initiative, which is happening later on. So same link today. Tomorrow, there's an, a separate link for the open session. And for those who are attending the closed session, there will be another link sent to you tomorrow morning. This is getting complicated, but it's not really. It just means that you have to have a link for each of the sessions. For the marketplace, um, Thursday and Friday, you have to register for each session separately using the HNPW website. So that's uh, for the marketplace, uh, register for each session. Just keep an eye on the timetable as well, because there might be some slight changes. For instance, the joint packaging initiative session I just referred to has been moved forward by 15 minutes, and that's now at 16.30 CET. Um, I mentioned before Mentimeter. For those who've joined late, let me just remind you again that you can um, you can use Mentimeter and the uh, we're going to look at it on a site. Oh, we're also looking where you've joined from. Let's have a look at that now. So uh, we've got uh, North America. Oh, it's gone again. No, it's come back. We've got uh, quite a number from North America there and a lot from Europe at the moment, but that's possibly because of the time of day. It's a good time of day for uh, Africa. We've got the, and we've still got some people in the ocean. Now, whether that's on some tiny island that I don't know about or just um, not being able to, not, uh, that map, it wasn't very kind of user friendly. Anyway, thank you very much indeed. Um, so let me just tell you about Mentimeter. And welcome to everybody, by the way, we, how many we've got 206 participants now. Uh, Mentimeter you can use when we want to when you want to ask a written question and the you just basically open it in your browser and the code is 10 32 21 21. I don't know whether we have a slide that we can show again. It's 10 32 21 21. We'll try and get, bring that slide to you in just in a moment because you can also uh, go to the QR code. It's much easier to scan on that. We also will be opening microphones for some of the sessions. And so uh, if you want to actually um, speak and we'll see you as well, you can um, indicate that to us by raising your hand on Zoom. You, you, we all know about Zoom now. You go to either participants or reactions, depending on your session, um, your sort of Zoom, and we will be able to come to you. So there we are, Mentimeter 1034 is the code and or you can scan on that QR code and you will be able to get in and then we can really start to get the interaction flowing because that is the whole point of the meeting. So there we are. That's all the practical stuff that I've got to tell you. Let me pass you over to Anya. 
Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, I'm sort of quite uh, puzzled by all those people in the ocean. I hope um, <laughs> they're not all at sea. <laughs> anyway, um, time now to hear from members of the Strategic Advisory Group um, on its work last year. And uh, a reminder that the SAG is the elected committee which provides strategic advice uh, and support to the representation uh, and interest of the community of partners. And there will be an election again uh, during this event. Um, and it provides the advice during the global meetings. Um, so to provide us with the first update, um, I'm hoping Fabrice uh, Perrault from Solidarités Internationales is uh, around. Fabrice, are you there? I'm hoping that you will be able to give us an update. Yes. yes Hello, hi, Fabrice. Welcome. Hello, Welcome. You. Over to you now. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Anya, for, for this introduction. I'm very happy to be here representing the, the SAG members. I'm also very happy to see the high number of participants to, to this meeting. meeting. We are more than, more than 200 uh, people there. Uh, really happy to see that. So I'm going to pro provide a quick SAG update on what's been going on these last few months uh, on the SAG in the name of all the SAG members we, which have been working on, the, on this presentation. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, as a refresher, what is the SAG? The SAG uh, is there to represent the partner community with uh, five main, main activities, which, is, which are a strategy and work plan. So we try to provide guidance uh, for the community on the strategy implementation, implementation plan. Uh, we are here to advise also on global activities or global operations uh, going on all over the world. We are there to, to help uh, the global cell on market partnerships and try to develop advice and support on engagement with the uh, possible strategic partners for the SAG. Uh, we play a role as well in the working group. So it's been a while since we haven't talked about the working group uh, because of the COVID crisis, of course, but we will try to We'll try to, to put that again on the table, but uh, the SAG has a strong uh, advisory role on the working group, having focal points on the different working group decided by the community. And then uh, last but not least, we are there to help in advocacy for the for adequation between the resources and the need for the logistics clusters activities. And also at local level uh, when possible on the advocacy for the operations. Next slide, please. So uh, the SAG is composed by eight members elected for two years, uh, knowing that it's been now almost three years since the, lag, uh, the last election because of the COVID crisis once again. Uh, three members are co uh, coming from non-governmental organization, two from governmental organization. One is a permanent, permanent seat from the WFP. Uh, there is also one fixed chair uh, which is uh, which is uh, occupied by the global logistics cluster coordinator, and we have a field coordinator, a field logistics cluster coordinator, uh, being there as an observer. So next slide, please. The actual member, but this is going to maybe change uh, in the next few days. We'll see uh, with the election on Wednesday. Uh, are Susan from Save the Children, Marie from Goal, Alex from WFP. Didier from ECHO, Theo from THW, and Nathalie from uh, Logistics Cluster Global Cell. And Christophe, uh, that I will just introduce right now because he's a new coming member. Uh, next slide, please. Christophe is replacing uh, Katia, who has been working uh, with us the last two years. Uh, and uh, Christophe is a new representative as a field cluster coordinator. He's been working with the logistics cluster for many years. You can see a small bio a biography uh, on the screen, but uh, uh, this is a warm welcome for you, Christophe, to, to join the SAC team. Next slide, please. Uh, some statistics on uh, what we have been working on this last uh, month. Uh, we have been preparing the GLM meeting, uh, the Global Logistics uh, Cluster meeting. So this one has been prepared with us uh, in, in, support, um, in support to uh, the global cell. We, um, we were having a lot of strategy discussions and uh, activity updates. Between the meeting, we had what we call the deep dive calls session, where we've tried to discuss uh, more, uh, more, um, 
more important subjects. And this subject, I will, uh, I will, I will talk about it in the next slide, but uh, most of them has been raised in the last uh, global meeting and we needed to take some time uh, within the SAG to discuss about it. Uh, the mandate, for instance, is a subject that needed to be discussed. And when we talk about mandate, we talk about logistics activities and the definition of logistics. Uh, logistics, is it only supply chain? Is it supply chain and fleet? Is it supply chain and fleet and procurement? There are many different ways of seeing logistics amongst the organization. And we, we have the feeling and the partners have the feeling that we, uh, we, we arrive at the point that we need to discuss about what will be uh, the, the future logistics cluster. Do we need to take also into consideration a uh, specific topic or let's say very important topics like procurement within the logistics cluster as the partners organization are uh, calling that, uh, uh, are using the, or how to say, as procurement fleet, uh, IT uh, premises are part of their own logistics. So will the logistics cluster of tomorrow, will, uh, will, will it represent all the activities of logistics amongst the organization. Uh, we have started also a discussion about the cluster leadership. Uh, as you know, the cluster lead today is WFP, but uh, the idea came that as it is the case for all the uh, other clusters, do we need or will it be relevant to have another uh, lead agency and to, uh, to, to lead the, cl the cluster as a co-lead. It is the case for the food security cluster, for instance. So this is under discussion. Uh, we'll have the chance to discuss that in the future, uh, but no, the subject is on the table and it is open. Uh, in terms of purely statistics, we have, been, uh, we have seen more than 1,000 SAC pages views on the website, but unfortunately, still zero email received on the SAC address meaning that this address is not used by the partners in order to get in touch with the cluster. But uh, happily, that's not the only way to contact the SAG members, because uh, as an example, last year, uh, last summer, we had direct contact with the field from uh, NGO organization who contacted directly the SAG uh, regarding the topic of the cross-border in Syria and the, and, the, and the end of the UN resolution. So, that means for me, okay, that's not very good, not receiving any email to this address, but when partners need to contact the SAG, they know how to reach us. So that's a good point. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, these are the different topics we are, we, we are discussing during the, the, deep, dive, the deep dive calls. Uh, we're talking about representation or representativity, uh, especially the representativity of local partners within the logistics cluster, what are, what are their place? Uh, is it uh, easy for them to join this uh, global community of the logistics cluster? And how can we improve the participation, uh, especially during the global meeting? Uh, leadership, I've talked about it, and mandated activities, what's the definition of logistics? Uh, this is what I just said before. Uh, and now I will leave the floor to Theo, who will present the rest of the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fabrice. Uh, Theo, are you there? Let's see if Theo is going to join. Yes, Theo is here. Good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, I, the next slide, please. I would like to yeah, add something on the next slide. It's the first, oh, no, but not the next one, one before. <laughs> The strategic and the implementation plan. Yes, we did a we did a lot of promises. There was a lot of promises uh, of the st strategic and implementation plan. And then, yeah, we paid it off uh, about COVID nineteen, and we tried to put another lead inside and support it. But uh, it's uh, we are still struggling on that, and this is one of the discussion what we will have as well. It's the discussion on how we build up or build together the uh, new strategy. And let's be realistic about what is possible, what we can save, how we can save time and yeah, how we build up the work, what we have done and what we will do in the future. The next slide. Uh, terms of the review, last review, Dublin 2019. 
there was an interest of IFRC, ICRC to be part of this of the strategic advisory group. Um, we had a lot of uh, debate on on this present on on representation of NGO uh, via um, uh, GO about the three seats and two seats, and we have a lot of discussion about localization, and this would be from our view a good. Uh, start to put uh, red, cross, red Cross and Red Crescent societies inside of that. Uh, the Red Cross and Red Crescent IFRC is rep representing 192 uh, local Red Cross, Red Crescent organizations. And this is a good step forward for the localization. Uh, but therefore, we will put some proposal later uh, when we have the, uh, the smaller groups uh, and discuss this on, on the voting. Yeah, and then the next slide, please. Uh, Fabrice told it there will be a voting. It will be on Wednesday, I guess. Um, there are two NGO positions and two GO positions has to be re-elected or elected. Um, there is only one NGO position, and this is uh, Mary who will be staged. She was the last one who has been elected. And all the others from the SEC, the two NGO positions, Fabrice and, and Sue, and as well the GO position, it's my per personal, my position, and the position of um, Didier Merckx from ECHO will be uh, in the election or in the, in the future election, on this election panel. Next slide, please. And this is, a, is a, uh, before I go on question or comments, and this is a challenge that we find enough people who represent and give advice to the global cluster. Uh, and in the meantime, between the uh, global cluster, GLM, global cluster meetings, uh, to give advice to the support cell in Rome and uh, advocate, uh, advocate for all of the activities what has been shown by Fabrice. 